when Cavendish finished his experiment, people were excited and they said that he had weighed the earth. So what does that mean? Well, he found the last piece of the universal gravitation equation, big G, that we needed to use to figure out how much mass the Earth actually has. Let's talk about how to do that. So Cavendish obtained a value for big G of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th. I have that written out here, not using scientific notation. And it's pretty obvious that it's a tiny, tiny number. And that's our explanation of why we don't notice people pulling on each other gravitationally. If this is our universal gravitation equation, if M1 and M2 are, say, 60 and kilograms and 70 kilograms, you multiply that by this tiny little number, it's going to make the force essentially zero. That's why we don't notice it. But this number is involved in figuring out how hard everything pulls on everything else. A lot of people say that Cavendish weighed the Earth in his experiment. That's not specifically what he did. He found the value for the gravitational constant, big G. But once you have big G, a very simple experiment allows you to weigh the Earth. I've got here a 500 gram mass, half a kilogram. We're just going to hang it from our spring scale. And we can see we get a value of about 4.9 for uh, the weight of this half a kilogram mass. That will allow us to get the mass of the Earth. With that data and Cavendish's new value for big G, we can actually get the mass of the Earth. You saw the scale gave a reading of 4.9 newtons, and we know that the hanging mass was half a kilogram. We don't know what the mass of the Earth was. We'll call that M2. So with big G and knowing the radius of the Earth, we should be able to get how much the Earth mass is. So here's the math to figure out how much uh, the Earth mass is. Um, you can see I solved it without numbers first to try to make my life a little easier. So I'll walk you through it. Here I multiplied both sides by the distance squared, which gave me distance squared FG equals GM1 M2. To get M2 by itself, I then divided both sides by GM1. So M2 was D squared FG over GM1. Then I plugged in the radius of the Earth. I plugged in... Uh, the weight uh, according to the scale. I plugged in the mass we were talking about, plugged in big G, and solving it all down, I end up with that as the mass of the Earth. Quite big. So gravity is a force between every two objects in the universe, and that means everybody has multiple forces of gravity on them. I've drawn me here surrounded by my three cats, and you can see that there's a gravitational force between me and each of the cats. And what is my acceleration caused by this, assuming I was free to move? It would be the sum of these. So we'd have to do sigma fx and sigma fy. We'd have to know these angles. Um, and we'd have to add them like we add any other forces. So you have multiple forces of gravity on you at any time. The Earth is pulling on you, the Sun is pulling on you, Mars is pulling on you, your first grade teacher is pulling on you. They all add up. A very common problem when using Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation is if you know the weight of something, we'll say 600 Newtons some object weighs on, on Earth, predicting what would happen if suddenly the mass of the Earth changed or the radius of the Earth or if we went to a planet that had larger or smaller values for these. Those are easy calculations to make and you don't actually have to redo the whole calculation. We can use the original weight and whatever the change is to help us out. 
So since mass is on top of this equation, that means it's directly proportional to the force of gravity or the weight. So changing mass is pretty easy to figure out how it changes weight. If one of them increases by a factor of three, the weight increases by a factor of three. If one of the masses decreases by a factor of three, the weight decreases the same amount. It's a little bit trickier if you're dealing with radius because it's on the bottom. And the way you do it is just remember inverse square. So the square part is whatever factor you change by, square it. So if r was 3 times bigger, 3 squared is 9. And then you just have to remember the inverse part. If you made the radius bigger, the weight gets smaller. If you made the radius smaller, the weight gets bigger. So in this case, we divided by 9 when the radius got 3 times bigger. We multiplied by 9 when the radius got three times smaller. I think the mathematically simplest way to do this uh, is to plug in the factor you change by into the equation. I want to show you what I mean. So this case, if you're standing on a planet and suddenly its radius, radius got seven times smaller, what would happen to your weight? Easiest way to figure this one out is that whatever your weight was, it was originally gm1 m2 over r squared. After this change, everything has remained the same except for the radius, which is now a seventh of what it was before. If you then simplify that down, it flips up to the top and you have 49 times gm1 m2 over r squared, which is 49 times that. So your weight is now 49 times the original. It's easier if uh, it's the mass that changes, but you do it exactly the same way. You write down the equation originally, you add in the factor that's changed by, which in this case is that one of the masses got five times bigger. Well, that's just five times what you had before, so you have five times the original. You just multiply the original by five. If both these changes happened, you just take your original weight and multiply it by both factors. So. We'll see a lot of examples of that. They're a pretty common question on many tests.